Harrisburg. Thanks for joining us for this Wednesday afternoon briefing on COVID-19 and other city-related news. Uh, we'll be going over today's numbers. We'll talk about some challenges we're seeing with testing right now and, of course, our regular act of courage. Uh, today's numbers, these are system-wide numbers uh, from when this started in March to now. Uh, our four healthcare organizations, Forest General, Merritt Health Wesley, Semri, and Hattiesburg Clinic have conducted 26,119 tests. 2,431 of those have come back positive. Again, those are not all in Forest and Lamar counties. They're not all active cases either. Uh, 22,148 have come back negative. Right now we have 1,540 tests which are pending. Uh, right now, hospitalizations. 63 people between our two hospitals are in the hospital because of COVID-19. Uh, there's an additional 21 that are under investigation, but that 63 is 19 over the average for the past two weeks. Uh, of those, there are 24 in the ICU between our two hospitals. That's seven over uh, where we've been in the last 14 days. And here's a snapshot of kind of how the hospitalizations have gone since the first part of April. Obviously, you see hospitalizations have, have climbed and reached new levels over the past few days. Uh, ICU admissions are kind of hanging out there in, in the in the mid-20s as well. And so we've it's the third day we're going to present this next slide to you. And our local hospital system now has the highest number of COVID positive patients thus far in the hospital and the ICU. Uh, we, were un, we were on a conference call with all of our stakeholders this morning and so um, to hear the 63 number was, is a very sobering thing that we should all take stock of. In terms of new positive cases, Forest County had added 11 cases today, Lamar County added 9, uh, 20 for the entire metro area. That brings totals to 927 in Forest County and then 500 in Lamar. Um, this is the five-day average where we take the number of new positive cases on a given day and average it with the two days prior and the two days after. Uh, obviously, uh, Forest County has had higher five-day averages, but when you, when you combine that with uh, Lamar County's higher than usual uh, five-day five average of new cases, uh, the metro area totals have added some new heights as well. Uh, we also talk about this inside 14 day. This is the number of people who's, who've received their positive test back within the past 14 days. Uh, because COVID-19 has a lifespan of 14 days or fewer unless there's an adverse reaction, this is a very basic idea of the number of active cases you could have in your county. Now keep in mind that when someone gets their positive test back, they could already have had symptoms for five or six days prior to that. And so they, their quarantine date may be over before 14 days. But again, this is, a, this is a rough estimate on the number of active cases you might have in a county. And so 184 in Forest County right now, um, 145 in Lamar. And we put these together uh, with the uh, blue line being Forest County, the orange line being Lamar County, the gray being the combined metro area total. Uh, Forest County's actually had higher totals, and that was back in the middle of May. We hit 200 one day. Uh, but when you factor that Lamar County is at its highest point, close to 150, uh, that means our total number of active cases potentially for the entire metropolitan area is well over 300 now, and that should be that should also give us concern when you factor that in with hospitalizations and ICU visits because we go back to our three goals. Uh, protect vulnerable populations, people over the age of 60, people with underlying or chronic health conditions. Uh, we also talk about preventing overrun of the health care system by slowing the spread. That's obviously a concern right now with the number of hospitalizations we have between our two hospitals. And then finally, continuing to prioritize pub public health and doing the right things so that our private sector can, can stay open. Uh, four factors, widespread availability of testing. We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, the wearing of masks, uh, face covering, uh, watching our own data and listening to all voices, whether in the private sector or whether in the healthcare community. Um, we, have some, we have four big challenges right now with testing. Uh, there is a big increase in the demand for testing. We're seeing this statewide, but we're especially seeing it here in our community. Uh, for example, back in April and May, uh, Hattiesburg Clinic would take 500 new tests a week. Uh, this Monday, two days ago, they took 500 in one day. And, and that should be a very startling and sobering uh, reality is, is that we took that many uh, new tests in one day. Uh, we've also seen, and, and we saw this in yesterday's briefing, the system-wide pending tests are well over a thousand for the second straight day, and that's because all the private labs that are being used are overloaded throughout uh, the country, especially in the South. Uh, and so, whether it, you know, it's for example, LabCorp um, turnaround times used to be you know, two or three days, and now they're up to a week. And so, because of that of that backlog and everyone uh, ha wanting that demand for testing, and so th those are those are challenges that we face right now. Uh, we did want to provide some information. We heard this on our stakeholder call this morning from Merritt. 
that they have some, some new quick turnaround uh, methods that are available. Um, they have the capacity for same-day testing, and they have, uh, they believe, a sufficient amount of testing kits to, to really expand the service to a lot of folks. Uh, Merit, of course, is, is private insurance, Medicare, Medicaid. They also take cash if you don't have coverage. Um, but they have this available at several clinics. And we're going to leave this slide up for just a second. There are three clinics in Hattiesburg, uh, one of which is the pediatric clinic. I know this question has come up uh, with folks I know uh, in terms of where they can get quick testing for if, if they have a suspected case among their children. Uh, but there are also clinics in Leakesville, Petal, Purvis, Sumrall, Tylertown, Wiggins. So if you are in uh, rural Forest County or you're in Greene County or Lamar County um, or, or Stone or, other, or elsewhere, uh, Merit Health Wesley um, has these ancillary clinics who have same-day testing, sometimes within 30 or 40 minutes. Uh, so, but however, uh, don't just show up. There's a number here that you want to call. Uh, this is 1-844-MS-MERIT. That's 1-844-MS-MERIT. You do need to call ahead for information and to let them know you're coming so you can get an appointment. And so, um, of course, in addition to this one, you also have all of the Hattiesburg Clinic testing sites that are still available. The, the free testing at CE Roy Community Center every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 2. You also have the Cough and Fever Clinic that you can uh, book an appointment at curbsidecovid.com. You don't have to get out of your car. They'll come and administer the test right then and there. Uh, and you also have Semri at, the, at their family health center as well. And so uh, some statewide data that I think is particularly important as we kind of navigate where, where this is headed. Uh, it was another big day in terms of new positive tests, 674 uh, new cases. There were also 30 additional deaths. Um, those ages range from 48 to 98. We, we, we tell you this to, for you to know this is not simply um, an old person's um, disease. They're not the only ones at risk for this. And 55% of those deaths were in long-term care facilities. Uh, some things that Dr. Dobbs specifically said, and if, and if you want to go back and see this briefing, uh, it's on Governor Tate Reeves' Facebook page. You can watch the, the whole thing. There were two key things he said that I took away from this. First of all, prevention is key. If, if you want to protect vulnerable populations, if you want to prevent overrun of the health care system, uh, the key is to not get infected in the first place. So prevention is key. And the way that you do that, according to Dr. Dobbs, is imagine that every person you come into contact with has coronavirus. And if you go into at it with that mindset, um, that, will, that will mean that you will wear a mask. That will mean that you will avoid large crowds. That, that will mean that you, you try to social, socially distance yourself. And so uh, two things that I took away from that briefing today that I think are, are worth repeating and worth us considering as we go forward. Uh, some city news, some good news, especially for our, our youth uh, right now in lieu of our city pools not being open this summer because of concerns with COVID. Uh, our fire department has stepped up to provide some, some fun opportunities with water uh, in, in different neighborhoods and parks. And so uh, Tuesday and Thursday throughout the month of July, beginning next Tuesday, the 14th at Chain Park, from 2 to 3 p.m., our fire department will uh, be having sort of a splash pad uh, water fun uh, day uh, with, with the fire trucks. And so uh, social, social, social distancing will be enforced. Um, there will be no tours of trucks available. However, um, I appreciate our fire department stepping forward and trying to provide fun opportunities for kids, particularly when a lot of things are shut down. But those dates are listed below right here. We'll, we'll officially be announcing this next week, but I wanted to give you a heads up that every Tuesday and Thursday in July, we'll be at a different park from 2 to 3 p.m. with the fire truck for, uh, for kids to have some fun. And finally, our act of courage today, there's another blood drive, an opportunity for you to show courage and to help out. Uh, at First Presbyterian Church on Saturday, July 18th from 9 to 2, uh, JA is sponsoring a blood drive. Uh, we, we know that um, during these times, hospitals still need blood, especially uh, that, that's difficult when people are afraid to go out and, and go into public places, but, but we certainly need blood uh, at, at both our facilities. Uh, Saturday, July 18th from 9 to 2 at First Pres. If you would like to book an appointment, bloodhero.com with the code Junior Auxiliary, and of course, we'd love to see you at First Pres. Uh, on Saturday the 18th. And as we go into the rest of this Wednesday, uh, remember to wash your hands, take care of yourself, wear a mask, please, if you go out in public, do only what is essential, and remember, you're safer at home. Courage.